If you listen carefully, you can almost hear the voices of yesterday space travelers echoing across time. They mingle with the sound of the surf breaking on the secluded beach at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This salty air has been filled with laughter, whispers, and even tears of the men and women who've passed through this shore's humble beach cottage before soaring off into the vastness of space. This is sacred sand out here, it really is. It's, uh, it's where people have made those, those final goodbyes and, and they were final. Uh, and, but we know it, I mean, there's, there's nobody, no spouse, no astronaut walks that sand that doesn't know there's a possibility that uh, this is forever. For years, it's been the quiet, unassuming pre-flight retreat where astronauts have reflected as they stood on the threshold of their dream, space travel. The cozy house sits perched above the dunes at the edge of a pristine beach that stretches undisturbed as far as the eye can see. Its nearest neighbors are launch complexes. Not all our time is totally full uh, getting briefings or preparing to go fly. And uh, it can get kind of claustrophobic over there just being cooped up in crew quarters. And it's, it's really nice to be able to go out to the beach house and just walk on the beach and just sit there and, and see the ocean and uh, walk up and down the beach, pick up shells, listen to the waves lapping on the shore. Before the first mission to sit out here and look at the sky and say, I'm next, I'm next, it's gonna happen. I am gonna go into space. Uh, and that would just overwhelm me. And what history of these people that have walked through this, this beach house, who have walked on that beach out there, said goodbye to their, to their spouses and the shadows of the rockets that they were launching tomorrow. I felt totally overwhelmed by that, by that reality, that I was now part of it, that I was walking the beach and saying goodbye in the shadow of the rocket that I was going to be riding tomorrow. Expanses of sea and sky make it a fitting place for astronauts and their loved ones. To me, the most special time at the beach house is when you can go out there with your family. There's one barbecue thing where you can bring out guests, and my parents got to come out. And the beach house has been there forever, and that history that stretches out for so long. And to share that and let my family meet the other crew members in a more casual setting. It's nice to have that really quiet time to be with your family and share that history and culture with them so they feel a little bit more connected to all that's going on. I looked for perfect little uh, seashells. I got four of them, one for each of my children and, and one for my wife. And I wrote a little message to each of them inside the shell. And I said, here, you hold this and give one to each of the kids and you hold on to this uh, when I'm launching. And you know, that's a little something of me with you during that time that I'm launching into space. And, uh, and somewhere I think they've all still got their, uh, their seashells. You're boundlessly joyful at the thought of riding into space again. I mean, you're over, overwhelmed with that joy, but at the same time, you have that, as she said, uh, the, the fear factor. It's hard to, hard to get your mind around that. I mean, but it is. I mean, that's the, that's the reality of an astronaut's life and the spouse's life in those final days and hours before a mission. That fear and joy overwhelm you. It's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, quite emotional when everybody leaves, you're by yourself and you see each of the couples of the crew going off in different directions knowing that it's a private moment and they're dealing with their own anxiety and in, their, in their way. Structurally, the two-story wood frame and concrete blockhouse never really outgrew its humble early 1960s beginnings as part of the oceanfront Neptune Beach subdivision. The development and its land were bought in 1963 for the grand sum of $31,500. The acquisition was to accommodate the expansion of what would become NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The Beach House is a unique facility here at the Kennedy Space Center and it's, uh, it's changed a lot over time. Uh, of course, it was originally a home that somebody was living in when uh, the Kennedy Space Center was built and uh, when eminent domain took over all the property down here to build our spaceport, uh, the beach house was there and became ours. The cottage was somehow spared the fate of the nearby residences and a store and gas station. I, I don't know who the far-thinking person was that preserved this house from destruction. 
Uh, there were other houses here when this was private property, but thank you for, for doing it. I, I'm sure they could not have imagined uh, how this would be part of space history, manned space flight history. Now, just as in the past, the little house by the sea stands ready to welcome the final shuttle crews and their families. Once again, the traditional pre-flight barbecues will give way to quiet walks on the beach as they add the final shuttle era chapters to this little known corner of space history.